Hey, welcome to the weekly update. I'm Chuck Mayer and finally I'm back. Thank you, Kara, for the last two weeks for subbing for me uh, and kind of taking over the reins. I'm just standing in front of this uh, beautiful, just came in, coastal standing canopy that's gonna go on either a 75 gallon or a 90 gallon or a 110, I'm not sure which. These are a custom made uh, by La Rochelle Designs and uh, they're, they're just, they're, phenomenal and there's a lot of new designs that we've got in the works. You've been thinking about maybe taking and making some furniture out of an aquarium or getting an aquarium to add to the furniture of your house. This is a good way to do it. But anyway, about the update. Uh, we got a lot of fish in this week. We got in uh, some dry goods that I'm going to point out in just a couple minutes. A lot of different things going on. Uh, things are changing every week. Uh, the bio cubes are still on sale. We're going to actually hold those over. Uh, the month ends today, so when you see this video, it's actually going to be October the 1st. So the bio cube sales that we were having, $249.99 for a 32 gallon introductory saltwater bio cube that we are gonna hold over as long as we can in October. This too is a great thing to put under a tree. You can actually wrap it. It's in a box and give somebody a saltwater aquarium for Christmas. So let's go see what came in this week. A lot of people have asked about our mask policy and we are wearing them. Uh, we are promoting that in the store. Uh, when you come in, you can see that you can easily get a mask. I'm not wearing one right now because I have to speak on camera and our camera isn't so good that it's gonna, you're gonna hear me through it. But anyway, uh, we are trying to be as protective as possible. So if you come in here, have any kind of feelings or issues with anything that's going on, or you don't feel safe, or just grab one of us and let us do whatever we need to do to make your experience good. Okay, so one thing that I do wanna mention real quick before we get into the fish are all the sea veggies, all the different types of macro algae, uh, or all the feeding, all the different seaweeds and stuff that we have for your fish. Uh, we have had green, green, and more green forever. We have finally got in all the different types. We have got purple, we have got green, we have got red, and I think we even have some brown marine algae. So lots of different types of algae to feed, lots of different types of fish. You definitely wanna pay attention to that when you're here. Okay, so we're going to start freshwater this week and we're going to start right here with the mustard pleco. Okay, so you want to check out this. This is a really cool rare pleco. We have it a very small size right now. It's a mustard pleco. Very, very cool because of how the colors develop and how the, uh, the kind of a mustard color develops on the fins as it gets bigger. But it's a very pronounced, very beautiful, beautiful pleco. Super beautiful pleco uh, that's got some size on it this week is the Royal Pleco. Uh, stripes on a big uh, head heavy body. It's uh, pretty much a big head with a little bit of tail uh, and that's kind of how it grows but a very very cool pleco nonetheless. If you're into collectible plecos, Kara definitely outdid herself this week. A lot of you guys have also been asking if you could buy the angels that were in the live planted tank here at Fishy Business. Uh, Kara just caught them out because she's changing a few things around and moved them. So these are the angels that were in the planted display tank that we weren't selling that are now available this week. So if you want a, some really hardy angels that have been very well fed, have come from an incredibly good, beautiful environment, these would be the ones you would want. As far as a schooling shark, uh, we got in the Roseline Sharks this week. This is a fan favorite, of course, because the bigger they get, the more colorful they get. Lots of pronounced red in the body with a lot of stripes. For freshwater community fish, for freshwater semi-aggressive fish, they will work in both of those environments. I even have a really nice school of them in a discus tank in service. So they will handle a lot of different uh, a lot of different environmental conditions, I guess. Uh, they're not super cheap, but they are super beautiful. They are hardy, and they are a wow factor for any freshwater tank. Another cool scavenger for any tank is the Mexican dwarf crayfish. These are really beautiful orange crayfish that add a little bit of a focal point to the, to the bottom of your tank. They scavenge any kind of leftover food. They're great to have just as a conversation piece. Obviously, they, they don't get very big, so you wouldn't want to keep them with any type of predatory fish. However, they are really good in a community tank where you've got some room for the fish to move around and can kind of stay away from them. They're not super aggressive. They are opportunistic. They are a really cool, cool crayfish. 
lot of people have been asking for us to get in the JLo Reef Afras in the African Cichlid Department. Kara got them this week. Uh, they're probably a small to medium fish, but they've already got the color coming up in them. Uh, they're in, and I got them. Super Red Pigeon Blood Discus came in this week, as well as Blue Diamonds. I don't have, as you can see, very many Blue Diamonds left, but beautiful, small starter discus for any type of discus fan out there or anybody wanting to try. A super beautiful type of cichlid that has to be kept in a super fancy tank. These discus are fantastic. Okay, so it's pretty rare that I have a hundred of anything unless it's feeder fish. However, this week I have a hundred ember tetras. Now, this is a smaller type tetra community fish, but wow, does it look impressive when it's in a very large school. It's in a small tank right now, so they're not exactly moving as one school on the video. But were you to put these in a fairly large tank, let's say 55 gallons or, or bigger, especially in a planted tank, they will school together and in conglomeration with each other, they will make a statement. Uh, it's very cool to have natural schooling fish in a fish aquarium. And this would be a good way to do it at a very economical price. Very, very cool. While they are not quite ready for sale yet, Kara did want me to mention the chili rasboras that came in because this is a fish we can't get all the time. Again, it's a smaller bodied fish in the rasbora group. Uh, just like the ember tetras, it's a great schooling fish for nano aquariums. It's a great schooling fish for just a planet aquarium where, where you have a true communal type environment. So chili rasboras might be available by the time you come in, maybe a, maybe a couple of days later, but we have them. Yellow rainbows came in this week, and the reason I'm mentioning them is because they have an abnormal, beautiful color at their age. Uh, you can look at these as well as the turquoise behind them. Uh, the colors are coming in really strong on these fish at a fairly young age. So if you have a planted tank, if you have a community tank, and you want to get some color in there with a fish that can go with semi-aggressive fish, that can go with community fish, that can go in a large aquarium, can go in a mid-size aquarium. It's very hard to beat both the hardiness, the showiness, and the color of a rainbow. A couple things about puffers. One, I have two of the golden puffers we mentioned a few weeks ago left. Uh, these are the last two I've got of the true freshwater puffer variety. Um, and I have no pea puffers this week. Kara ordered a hundred of them and none came in. So if you are out there looking for pea puffers as we get calls on quite frequently, we don't have them this week, but we are really trying to get them. Dojo loaches. We got dojo loaches in this week. That's all I have to say about that. It's not for everybody, but if you've got a tank you can dedicate, one of the coolest fish we sell in freshwater here is the flower horn. Now this is a fish that gets some size, uh, gets this huge hump on the top of its head that is highly prized and collected and shown uh, at fish shows all over the place all over the world actually. The colors on this guy are extraordinary. Um, he is not a great tank mate with everybody else, but if you are one of those fish enthusiasts that don't mind having a tank, special tank for a special fish, we have an amazing flower horn at an amazing price right now uh, at the shop. Okay, we're gonna call this part one of two parts of saltwater. We've gotten half the saltwater shipment at this the time of this recording and then Gracie tonight will actually get the second half so you're gonna to have to watch Facebook for the big majority of the specialized fish and then you're gonna to get to see me go through the few things we got this morning that just kind of updates the collection so off we go okay so the first three fish that came out of the bag were a juvenile Emperor Angel um, we also got a striped puffer fish which doesn't get too too terribly big and we've got the um, double bar rabbit fish. Rabbit fish are great because they're both hardy and they're, they really don't have or put up any aggression or get much aggression from pretty much anything that's in the tank. So if you're wanting kind of a filler fish, a rabbit fish is a great way to do that. It's in the same family as the fox face. Uh, it's a pretty fish, not super, super amount of color, but it's also not very expensive either. Uh, the Emperor Angel that's coming back into view, uh, really, really nice specimen there. And of course, this turns into an amazing fish as it gets older and not that it's got shabby colors now. A beautiful, beautiful fish. 
the uh, blue spotted Toby Puffer came in this week. A lot of people ask about these. Of the Toby Puffers, like the Valentini, the Spotted, the Blue Spotted, this is, this is probably my favorite because as it gets a little bit of size, uh, it gets really, really colorful, colorful blue spots. This is, a, uh, this is a dwarf puffer. It doesn't get very big. It is not reef safe, however. Uh, it's, I don't find it to be a coral eater, but it will take small invertebrates, uh, sessile animals like that. So you do kind of have to watch it and keep it in a fish only or in a very scaled down invertebrate tank, uh, but a great little fish with a lot of personality. If you pay attention to the weekly update on any kind of a regular basis, you'll know one of my favorite tanks is Gracie's Tank of Little Guys. Uh, she always gets some, some uh, very young juvenile versions of a lot of cool fish. Obviously the benefit of this is these fish haven't been so acclimated to natural ocean that their adaptability in uh, salt water or in your aquarium tends to happen pretty fast. Uh, sometimes they come in super, super small. These aren't too terribly small, but they are very young variations of all these different fish. So what you're looking at are a small sailfin tang, a half black mimic tang that just rode into view. Um, I've got a blue eyed bristle uh, tooth tang in here that's got a lot of blue in it. You'll also see the Koran angel, which is very close to the emperor angel we just looked at. Um, and there is a yellow mimic tang, which is very beautiful over the long haul. Uh, check, check out, again, the half black mimic tang that comes into view. One of, the, one of the really cool things about this fish is the orange crest that it has on the dorsal uh, fins that run down the back of the body. Really, really beautiful, soft, uh, pastelish type fish. Uh, it's just super, super in a fish tank. One of the rarest puffer fish that we get is the Mappa puffer. Uh, we don't have them very often, and I've had one for the last two weeks, which is kind of crazy. This, this is just a gorgeous fish. Of the spotted type puffers and the showy puffers that come out of the ocean, this one has a wow factor that just sets it aside. Gorgeous fish, very unique personality, um, and I have one right now. Very young, too. Bet you'll never guess why they call this a bicolor angelfish. Uh, half purple, half yellow. Uh, it's a great fish. This is a central pygy angelfish. It is a dwarf angelfish. However, this is probably full growth. Uh, I got in two this week. The other one's pretty small, but this one's out showing off, so I wanted to show him. So you can see the richness of the two colors. This is a, uh, this is a very large version of this fish, though. It is really, really cool, and uh, we got one right now. Blonde Naso Tang. This is probably one of the fastest selling fish that we have. They come in, they typically do very well. They do get some size on them, so all the Naso varieties get, a, get some size on them. So you do want a good bit of running room, but typically a very hardy fish. Doesn't put up a lot of uh, aggression or stance with other tangs. Most other tangs will leave it alone. Most other fish will leave it alone. It tends to work even in an aggressive tank or it works in the most simplest tanks. Pretty much keeps to itself, uh, can be a voracious feeder once it settles in. Just a great fish all together and uh, also known as the lipstick tang. The copper band butterfly, one of the coolest butterflies that we have. Uh, one of the few butterflies that will actually stock. The reason being the survivability of this fish is a little better than some of the other fish that are, that are some of the other butterflies rather. Uh, this is great for eating Aptasia and noxious anemones that get in your tank that cause uh, weed issues in your coral garden, so to speak. Uh, it, it is a fish that can be difficult to feed. It is not for the beginner, but it is a beautiful, peaceful fish that if it does get established in your tank, can be one of the showstoppers of the tank. Okay, so got two different types of cardinal fish in this week in mass. We have the uh, pajamas and we have the bangui cardinals. Cardinals are great fish because they're one of the few saltwater fish that you can actually school in a tank. They don't take up a lot of running room and they pretty much keep to themselves. They make an impressive display in mass. So when they're actually all together in a group, uh, it can look really, really stunning. One of the most beautiful tanks I have in service is a 265 gallon tank in Lexington, and uh, the owners have put in 
cardinal fish in such a way that when I walked into their house this past Monday, it just takes your breath away. It's just so cool to see them all hovering around a reef, happy and ready to eat. So very, very cool fish there. Uh, not super expensive, so it's not hard to get a few. And uh, yeah. Okay, so that's a wrap for this week. Uh, we've got a couple. There's a really cool video out of Hayden going through the through the store, showing a bunch of different tanks that we have on the floor. I'm gonna try between now and the end of the year to update this about every two or three weeks with one of us. That way you can actually see all the tanks, stands, canopies that are on the floor as they come in. So that's one video that's out there. Uh, there's a, there's a, the best of the grind is coming. I think episode 20 is Tuesday. So we will have some of the best segments from all the grind segments and maybe one or two surprises for this Tuesday's video. And let's see, what else have we got? I think that's it for this week. We've got, uh, again, the saltwater fish that are coming in tonight will be posted on Facebook. We will post the winner. We will actually be doing the drawing tonight because it's Wednesday, September the 30th right now. And so by tomorrow we'll have a winner and we will go into next week uh, discussing what the gift we're gonna give away for the month of October is. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thanks for taking the time to tuning in. Always thank you for taking the time to tune in. And uh, have a great week, God bless, and we'll see you back here next week.